Takotsubo cardiomyopathy, also known as stress cardiomyopathy, is a type of non-ischemic cardiomyopathy in which there is a sudden temporary weakening of the muscular portion of the heart. This weakening may be triggered by emotional stress, such as the death of a loved one, a breakup, rejection from a partner or constant anxiety. This leads to one of the common names, broken heart syndrome. Stress cardiomyopathy is now a well-recognized cause of acute heart failure, lethal ventricular arrhythmias, and ventricular rupture. The name Takotsubo syndrome comes from the Japanese word for a kind of octopus trap, J.A., because the left ventricle takes on a shape resembling a fishing pot. Signs and Symptoms the typical presentation of Takotsubo cardiomyopathy is a sudden onset of chest pain associated with ECG changes mimicking a myocardial infarction of the anterior wall. During the course of evaluation of the patient, a bulging out of the left ventricular apex with a hypercontractile base of the left ventricle is often noted. It is the hallmark bulging out of the apex of the heart with preserved function of the base that earned the syndrome its name Takotsubo or octopus pot in Japan, where it was first described. Stress is the main factor in Takotsubo cardiomyopathy, with more than 85% of cases set in motion by either a physically or emotionally stressful event that prefaces the start of symptoms. Examples of emotional stressors include grief from the death of a loved one, fear of public speaking, arguing with a spouse, relationship disagreements, betrayal, and financial problems. Acute asthma, surgery, chemotherapy, and stroke are examples of physical stressors. In a few cases, the stress may be a happy event, such as a wedding, winning a jackpot, a sporting triumph, a reunion, or a birthday. Takotsubo cardiomyopathy is more commonly seen in postmenopausal women. Often there is a history of a recent severe, usually negative, sometimes happy, emotional or physical stress. Causes The cause of Takotsubo cardiomyopathy is not fully understood, but several mechanisms have been proposed. Transient vasospasm Some of the original researchers of Takotsubo suggested that multiple simultaneous spasms of coronary arteries could cause enough loss of blood flow to cause transient stunning of the myocardium. Other researchers have shown that vasospasm is much less common than initially thought. It has been noted that when there are vasospasms, even in multiple arteries, that they do not correlate with the areas of myocardium that are not contracting. Microvascular dysfunction, the theory gaining the most traction is that there is dysfunction of the coronary arteries at the level where they are no longer visible by coronary angiography. This could include microvascular vasospasm, however, it may well have some similarities to diseases such as diabetes mellitus. In such disease conditions the microvascular arteries fail to provide adequate oxygen to the myocardium. Midventricular obstruction, apical stunning, it has been suggested that a midventricular wall thickening without flow obstruction is important in the pathophysiology. Catecholamine-induced myocyte injury, it has been suggested that the response to catecholamines, such as epinephrine and norepinephrine, released in response to stress, leads to heart muscle dysfunction that contributes to Takotsubo cardiomyopathy. It is likely that there are multiple factors at play that could including some amount of vasospasm and a failure of the microvasculature case series looking at large groups of patients report that some patients develop Takotsubo cardiomyopathy after an emotional stress, while others have a preceding clinical stressor, such as an asthma attack or sudden illness. Roughly one-third of patients have no preceding stressful event. A 2009 large case series from Europe found that Takotsubo cardiomyopathy was slightly more frequent during the winter season. This may be related to two possible-slash-suspected pathophysiological causes, coronary spasms of microvessels, which are more prevalent in cold weather, and viral infections such as parvovirus B19 which occur more frequently during the winter. Diagnosis 
Transient apical ballooning syndrome or takotsubo cardiomyopathy is found in 1.72.2% of patients presenting with acute coronary syndrome. While the original case studies reported on individuals in Japan, takotsubo cardiomyopathy has been noted more recently in the United States and Western Europe. It is likely that the syndrome previously went undiagnosed before it was described in detail in the Japanese literature. Evaluation of individuals with takotsubo cardiomyopathy typically includes a coronary angiogram, which will not reveal any significant blockages that would cause the left ventricular dysfunction. Provided that the individual survives their initial presentation, the left ventricular function improves within two months. The diagnosis of takotsubo cardiomyopathy may be difficult upon presentation. The ECG findings often are confused with those found during an acute anterior wall myocardial infarction. It classically mimics ST segment elevation myocardial infarction, and is characterized by acute onset of transient ventricular apical wall motion abnormalities, ballooning, accompanied by chest pain shortness of breath, ST segment elevation, T wave inversion, or QT interval prolongation on ECG. Cardiac enzymes are usually negative and are moderate at worst, and cardiac catheterization usually shows absence of significant coronary artery disease. The diagnosis is made by the pathognomonic wall motion abnormalities, in which the base of the left ventricle is contracting normally or is hyperkinetic while the remainder of the left ventricle is akinetic or dyskinetic. This is accompanied by the lack of significant coronary artery disease that would explain the wall motion abnormalities. Although apical ballooning has been described classically as the angiographic manifestation of takotsubo, it has been shown that left ventricular dysfunction in this syndrome includes not only the classic apical ballooning, but also different angiographic morphologies such as midventricular ballooning and, rarely, local ballooning of other segments. The ballooning patterns were classified by Shimizu ETAL as takotsubo type for apical akinesia and basal hyperkinesia, reverse takotsubo for basal akinesia and apical hyperkinesia, midventricular type for midventricular ballooning accompanied by basal and apical hyperkinesia and localized type for any other segmental left ventricular ballooning with clinical characteristics of Takotsubo-like left ventricular dysfunction. In short, the main criteria for the diagnosis of Takotsubo cardiomyopathy are, the patient must have experienced a stressor before the symptoms began to arise, the patient's ECG reading must show abnormalities from a normal heart, the patient must not show signs of coronary blockage or other common causes of heart troubles, the levels of cardiac enzymes in the heart must be elevated or irregular, and the patient must recover complete contraction and be functioning normally in a short amount of time. Please subscribe and thanks for watching.